Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Reptiles in the News. I'm Brian Barczyk, and let's jump into the first story, where a 21-year-old Chinese native woman actually perished when she was trying to make traditional snake wine. Now, apparently, she bought a banded crate on an e-commerce site, was shipped to her door. When she got it, she went to make this traditional wine, and she was bitten by the banded crate. And eight days later, she actually died in the hospital. Now, it's always a tragedy when someone dies, and I never want to see that happen to anyone. And it does kind of paint a bad image of snakes. But the truth is, I think the bigger story is here is why are people making traditional wine? Apparently, traditional snake wine is supposed to give you extra energy. I mean, haven't they ever heard of caffeine or energy drinks? The fact is, historically, traditional Chinese medicine is killing a lot of animals. We all know about rhino horns and the whatnot like that. I'm not exactly sure why a 21-year-old new generational person is still making traditional snake wine to begin with. Now, of course, she didn't deserve to die. It just goes to show you that this archaic method of medicine that we all know does not work. Science has proved that these traditional medicines don't work in the way that they want to. That's not saying that there isn't herbal and other medicines that do work. I'm not going to get into that one. But I do want to leave this story with you. Two things. Number one, do you think that traditional Chinese medicine should be outlawed? Do you think that there should be some sort of punishment for this type of action? After all, a lot of animals are perishing because of this practice. And number two, I mean, what do you think about ordering a banded crate? online and having it shipped your door. Regardless, I'm going to leave it in the comments. You guys let me know what you think. This next story is pretty cool. There is a new species of frog discovered that was thought to be the splendid frog, the Cruziohyla cacarifer. And in reality, it turned out to be a completely new species. Andrew Gray, the curator of herpetology at the Manchester Museum, actually named this Cruziohyla sylvia. Gray spent 20 years actually working on this particular frog. And after conducting genetic and biochemical work, including skin peptide profiling, to indeed determine that it was a new species from the splendid frog. According to a press release from the Manchester University, less than 150 of the splendid frogs to exist in the wild. Gray said that it was amazing that there was such a distinct species of frog that was still not described. He said, however, more importantly, how important it is for each species to really be researched in order to ensure that these amazing creatures will still be around for 100 years from now. I don't know. I think it's pretty amazing that we're discovering new species all the time. And the truth is, we know that there are hundreds, if not thousands, or maybe even tens of thousands of species of amphibians, reptiles, and other invertebrates that haven't been discovered yet. I don't know about you guys, but I would like to get out there one day and actually try to develop that. Do I hear uh, Barchekii in the future? I have no idea. But with that said, I'll leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this new species of frog, and let me know if one day you'd like to go on a research trip and discover your own species. Next up, we truly have a pretty tall tail. I mean, literally a tail. And there's actually an alligator that I've actually come to know personally at the Phoenix Herpetological Zoo that's called Mr. Stubbs. He actually lost his tail during an illegal exotic animal trafficking thing, and it ended up at the Herpetological Zoo. Now, what's remarkable about this story is that they actually 3D printed another alligator tail from a living alligator that was about Mr. Stubbs' size. Now, the first go around, to be honest with you, when they attached it to Mr. Stubbs with some straps, it was a little bit too and he had a hard time getting around and certainly couldn't swim. Now, the second time around, they nailed it. And I was actually there to see this animal. It's pretty amazing that Mr. Stubbs is missing the entire tail, but with this prosthetic 3D print on it, it moves around just like a normal alligator and can even get in the water and use the tail just like a normal alligator would. This is a real feel-good story. And again, I really enjoyed my trip to the Phoenix Herpetological Zoo. It's not open to the public, but if you're ever in the Phoenix area, I really suggest you reaching out to them and trying to get a private tour. They have one of the most incredible venomous snake collections you'll ever see. Have almost every species of crocodile, not to mention tons of other really cool reptiles. Herpetological zoos like this need to be more prevalent throughout the country. I'd like to know from you guys, would you like to go see that? What do you think about a prosthetic leg for RJ maybe? As we continue to evolve this show for you guys, one of the things that I really wanted to add was kind of a shout out or highlight of some of the really cool either hatching or events that happened during the week in reptiles and for that matter, all animals if something really significant 
significant happens. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw out some things that made me happy when I saw them. Good friends of mine, Cody and Pia from Terrestrial and Arboreal, actually had some beautiful little western green mambas this week. Travis Johnson sure got a big surprise when he bred two bull snakes together. Now they were both possible head for both axanthic and hypomelanistic, but to his surprise, it turned out that they actually were het for both of those recessive mutations, and he was able to produce some ghost bull snakes. Congratulations, Travis. Over at Bob Clark Reptiles, he actually hatched out some patternless African rock pythons. Now that's a recessive mutation, and quite honestly, patternless African rocks have been around for several years, but you don't see too many people breeding African rocks now, so kudos to you, Bob. I certainly would like to add some African rocks to the reptile zoo. And you know I have to mention some really cool ball pythons. My friend Miguel from Always Evolving Pythons hatched out this beautiful pastel freeway and a freeway ball python. Way to go, Miguel. Those are some beautiful snakes. And then finally, Tim Magnum from TSM Corn Snakes have this beautiful, huge swatch of corn snakes. I absolutely love seeing a bunch of baby corn snakes. Let me know down below if you guys have a story that you'd like me to follow, someone that hatched out something really cool, something that you'd like me to highlight in next week's episode. And back to the next story, over at the Reptile Files website, there was a really interesting article that hit close to my heart because this is something that I really truly believe is a problem in the reptile hobby. And the title of the article was called Elitism in the Reptile Hobby. Now basically what this article was about was the fact that we as a hobby are growing so we're not as much of a closet type of a reptile hobby anymore. It's really become pretty mainstream but as that mainstream part of the hobby has continued to grow there's a lot of elitism and what that means is the people that have been around for a while actually don't seem to really be welcoming the new people. They call them newbies and when newbies actually ask questions, the same questions that we probably asked when we started the business, the people that have been around for a while seem to attack those people like you shouldn't keep reptiles if you don't already know or do your research. The truth is as experienced reptile keepers and people we should be inviting into the hobby, we should be willing and able to answer those newbie questions so that we welcome into the hobby. It's only beneficial to our hobby as it grows and more people get in. We want people to have a really great experience right from the get-go. Also in this hobby, she talked about bigotry, basically saying that it's kind of an old boys club, you know, mainly men that kept reptiles for many, many decades. And now women have become a huge part of the hobby, and I couldn't agree more. Obviously, Lori here is a huge part of BHB and has been for 28 years. But now there are a lot of women that are really making unbelievable strides in the hobby. It's certainly not an old boys club anymore. Women are just as important as guys are when it comes to the reptiles, and we should welcome them in. And this article kind of points out some of the bigotry that's been happening in the hobby where some of the guys that have been around for a while aren't quite as welcoming as I think they should be. So that's something that we should definitely keep an eye on. And then she moves on to the normal people in the hobby. Typically reptile people have been thought of long hairs and tattoos and well, yeah, and colored hair. The truth is, normal people, whatever that means, are keeping reptiles in the masses. I mean, from doctors to attorneys to professionals of all sorts. People that you would meet in the store and you would never think, wow, do they keep a snake or do they keep a lizard? I think that's a great thing for the hobby because we certainly don't want to be stereotyped as a certain type of people. So we should, again, continue to welcome all of this new diversity into the hobby. One of the last things she really touches on is, I'm an expert in how many people that have gotten into reptiles over the last five years, 10 years, whatever the case Case may be and all of a sudden are anointing themselves as experts. I've seen it where someone that's only been keeping reptiles for a year, maybe a year and a half, all of a sudden has that mentality like they know more than everyone and they want to be treated like they are somehow an expert. Listen, I've been working with reptiles my entire life and professionally for 29 years and I'm still learning almost every single day. So I don't even consider myself an expert with almost three decades of experience. I really think that everyone needs to check their ego just like this article says. Kind of step back and realize that hey, you don't know everything. None of us know everything. These are animals and every time you think you know something about them, they're going to teach you a different way for sure. So in the end, this article was pretty interesting and as always, I'll put links in the description to everything that I've covered in this week's Reptiles in the News. I definitely think this article in particular is worth a share and definitely worth a read. A little addition to today's news, I really wanted to kind of spend a few minutes with you guys and see how you feel about this news. What direction would you like me to go? Do you want me to go more international stuff like the news stories about discoveries or the 
science side of things? Would you like to go more industry? Like what's the breeding like? Do you want me to go into the stories more in depth about the people that produce animals? I mean, I really want this news to be something that you really enjoy. So I wanted to know down below if you could comment. Let me know what direction you'd like to see. What do you like about this news stories? What don't you like? What would you like me to add more of? Do you want it to be longer? Do you want it to be shorter? Do you want me to maybe do two or three per week? I mean, I really want you guys to help me in the decision making of what direction this show goes. It sure is nice to revive this channel and I really do love bringing this type of news to you. These are the stories that I read late at night when I'm sitting around just going over all kinds of stories. So I'm really excited to get the opportunity to share it with you guys. But again, I want you to be part of the decision making. So let me know in the comments what you like and I'll make sure to include that in the next week's show. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Reptiles in the News. Again, go down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about everything. And if you have any ideas for something you think I should cover next week, let me know. I'm really curious to hear what you think about this series. I do appreciate your support. Remember to be kind to someone. And until next week, this was Reptiles in the News.